Hi everyone. In the last video, we looked at how to use Stable Diffusion locally on your Mac. And today, we'll look at how to use Stable Diffusion using Replicit API. There is a difference between running it on your own and using some other company's servers or APIs. When you run it on your own, you own everything. You don't send any data to someone else's computer. There's no restrictions. You don't have to pay for anything. So that's all good. But the main problem is the performance. Running any recent machine learning models takes a good GPU. And especially on Mac, it'll be either too slow or sometimes you can't even run a model. And that's where using APIs can be useful. Yes, you have to send your data to a cloud and you have to pay for the usage, but the speed is much better. And I found it's pretty cheap for simple experiments. So that's what I want to show you today. When you go to their website, you will see this explore page with a list of all the different models you can run. There are models to generate 3D objects or audio, images, and language models as well. But we'll be looking at diffusion models to generate images. You just need to pick one you like to use. For instance, this stable diffusion model. And there's an instruction on how to use it with Node.js, Python, Docker, etc. The template that I made and I want to show you today has already taken care of the server side code. So you don't have to write any Node.js code. You can just focus on your Canvas sketch with P5.js. And all you need is going to the API page and you get your own API token, which you don't want to share with anybody. Yeah, keep it to yourself. And you also need to get this model name and version, model stream. So that's pretty much all you need. And depending on which model you use, they take different types of inputs. Some models only take text input, prompt. Some models take image as input or even video as input, a negative prompt, etc. So this is something you'll just have to check for each model. And in terms of pricing, I found it pretty cheap. When you sign up, you don't have to enter credit card yet. They give you some free credit. They don't specify how much credit you get, but I've used for like 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and they still didn't ask me for um, billing. Eventually I had to put my credit card and uh, I've been paying for the usage, but it hasn't been that expensive. I've been generating some images to make this tutorial. Here are some lists of images that I've generated, quite a lot. And so far, I've only accrued about 50 cents. Yeah, 46 cents so far. And here is how you can get an API token or API key. You first have to sign up, that's for free. And you go to your dashboard and go to API tokens. And there is a list of tokens, you can create one or remove anything you don't need anymore. And of course, you don't want to show this token to anyone else because if someone else uses your token to generate images, you're going to have to pay for it. So when you get the token, just copy it and I'll show you my template code. Here is my code template. I'll share the link to download in the description. I would also like to thank everyone who has purchased my source code to support the channel. This is a P5.js sketch template running with Vit.js dev server. The first thing you need to do is to create an environment variable with your replicate API key. So you create this file, dot env dot capital letters, dev dot local, and open, and then type in, in all capital letters, replicate underscore API underscore key, equal sign, and then the actual API key you copied from replicate.com website from your own account. Again, don't share this with anyone else. The reason why I'm showing you this is that by the time this video is up on YouTube, I would have already removed, deleted this key. So get your key, paste it in this file and save it. And then this key is used in vidconfig file with this load and function to get environment variables. And that's sent to replicate.com server using this plugin called sum replicate. So this plugin will deal 
with everything that's related to Node.js code. So you don't have to write any Node.js code. You don't have to worry about it. You only need to focus on your Canvas sketch. As far as the setup goes, that's pretty much it. And the rest is just writing your own sketch. So let's start the server, local dev server. So open up another terminal window and type in npm first i to install all the dependencies and then npm run dev. And when you open up your browser, you will see something like this, which has a prompt text field and color picker. So you can draw on it and then generate button, which will send a request to the API. And then you get back generated image. So this is coming from the drawing.js script. This is P5 sketch using instance mode. And I want to show you briefly what's in this script. First, there is a dry run flag. It is set to true. I edit this variable so that you don't accidentally make requests to the server and just pay for unnecessary usage. So when dry run is set to true, when you generate it, it will just show you a sample image. So this is not really generated from the server or API. It is a local file just to simulate the process. So when you're working, when you're maybe making some UI updates, then you can safely click generate button without having to worry about paying for anything. And only when you are ready to actually generate images and make requests to the API, set it to false. So let's try it. So I'm going to set it to false and make sure you have that key paste it into that environment variable and click generate. And you will see in your console, it is now requesting output generated. And also it automatically saves the output image into your file system. And this is what I get. Pyramid made of concrete and steel, modern architecture, sunset, afternoon. And it only took like two, three seconds. And we can fit this image back into the model by generating again. And this is what we get the second time. And if you like, you can just paint on top of it. Maybe there are several pyramids, not just one. I'm going to shade a little bit. And let's say pyramids and send it again. And there you go. You can do it as many times as you like. All right, so this is dry run. Let me set it back to true. I don't want to accidentally make a request. And then model. Model string is what you will have to find from replicate.com website. And then prompt is what you want to generate images for. And of course, you can edit it in the browser as well. Width and height is the size of the canvas and also the image that will be generated from. If you're using 1.5 models, use 512 as base and SDXL model, use 1024. I would say just use SDXL. It's got a better quality. And because we're using API, it's pretty fast. And there are some DOM elements and key pressed. With square brackets, you can uh, change the size of your brush, make it thicker, thinner. And this is very, very basic setup. Of course, you can build on top of it, make more UI elements, add some exciting functionalities here. And input is important. We are sending prompt and the image, which is canvas, our canvas, width and height, and random seed. But if you look at replicate.com for each model, they can take different types of inputs. So some uh, model will take negative prompt things that you don't want to include in your generated image. Well, some models will take, I think pretty much all image models, num inference steps, I think. And it really depends. LCM models 
generally you only need four or six steps. But if you're using regular stable diffusion model, that step count needs to increase a lot more to get a good quality images, like 40, 50. So that's something you're going to have to just experiment with. And like guidance scale, how well it's going to follow your direction, follow the original image, things like that. So that's something you're going to have to just look at the website and figure out. And next part is just getting the result back from the server and, and draw on the P5 canvas. If you're doing any mouse interaction, I'm using mouse variable and P mouse variable instead of P5's uh, mouse X, mouse Y. Uh, that's because of canvas scaling. So you see how it's nicely fitting into the window, no matter how big, small you scale your window to like this. There was some complication with using P5's mouse X, mouse Y variable. So I'm using my custom variables, mouse and P mouse. And this is pretty much it. And there's another script called basic. Uh, it's got pretty much the same setup, but I would say simpler because it doesn't have any UI elements. Just one more file that I included. And sometimes server may throw you an error. There might be some message. So just check your console, either in your browser or in your terminal too. And lastly, maybe I can run a different model. Let me go back to replicate.com website. What I had a lot of fun with in the last couple of days is uh, emoji, emoji model. This emoji model generate Apple emoji icons, something like this. It's pretty fun. We already have an API token and the only thing I need is this one, this model name. Let me copy it and replace it here. And then some models you need to input a specific keywords to get the best result. So in this case, if I go to examples, I've noticed that all the prompts are using a talk emoji of. It starts with a talk emoji of, or a talk emoji of a tiger face. So that's what I'm going to do. Update the prompt to talk emoji of a uh, Maltese dog. I'm going to paint Maltese with its ear. How about we do another round? This model takes a little longer because it's not LCM model. That's cool. What if I want to change the eye color to green? How about that? I'm just going to edit the image and prompt as well with green eyes. Will it work? So we are requesting it. Yes, it works nicely. You got the emoji of a Maltese dog with green eyes. All right, so that's it for today. Thanks again for the support, and I will see you in the next video.